Welcome to the Freedom Property Podcast, the modern real estate brand empowering excellence. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? We are back in the studio today. I have Robbie LaFaro. Is it you pronounced it LaFaro? Yep. Yeah, awesome. All the way from Harcourt's Connections. Robbie, you are, I'm going to give you a little bit of a hype up right now. You are the fastest ever agent to reach titanium status in the history of Harcourts. You're also Harcourts' youngest ever business owner. That's right. And um, I've recently been out to your office there, Mm. and um, I was absolutely shocked with that office. Really? Unbelievable office. One of Mm. the best real estate offices, I think, probably – um, maybe in the country, I don't know much about the other states, but definitely here in Brisbane, mm. it was um, yeah, an amazing yeah. office. Well, thanks for saying. Yeah, yeah, no, you should be very proud of yourself, mate. Um, that was a big call for you to to jump in and get an office like that. I yeah, imagine. we didn't. I, I didn't need anything that big or that sort of grand, but um, I sort of thought if you build it, they will come. So at the time when I moved into that office, I think we had maybe twenty people. Yeah. Um, Moved in, and uh, that was just over a year ago. Now we've got 50, 55 maybe people wow. now. So Unbelievable. it's growing. Yeah, I really want to get into that. I really want to understand your mindset and, um, you know, having the guts to take that on as well because that is such a huge play. And um, I see a lot of agents like they're, they get to that point where they're, you know, they're ready to, to make this jump, but they don't. You know, yeah. and they're sitting there and they're like, this is this is your opportunity here. This is yours. You could take this. And then they just <laughs> sit back and wait. But you obviously haven't done that. No, I, I'm i very impatient and I've always <laughs> sort of been one to just jump straight in. Yeah. Um, I believe that comfort is the biggest enemy of success. Nice. So I believe in ditching a safety net, just jumping in um, and just go for it. Sometimes you got to take a risk. No one ever got rich by saving money or or whatever. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, there you go. This is what this podcast is going to be about, I feel. It's about, you know, uh, taking a risk, you know, working hard and um, and following the process because that's exactly what you've done. But can we start, can we slow it down a little bit? Mm. Because how old are you? 28 now. 28. Yep. Okay. So you're very successful for a 28-year-old. Um, and like do you, you started as an agent, correct? Yeah. I started... Uh, probably just over three years ago as a sales agent. Um, First time in real estate, January 2020. Um, I jumped in as kind of like a a sales associate to the principal at the time. Um, When I started, that office had the principal, um, another sales agent, me as his assistant, um, a property manager, and and I think a receptionist or something. Um, That was it. So I came in pretty nice. Yeah. And was your brother working in the business then as well? No, not at that stage. Yeah. Is he your younger brother or older brother? He's my younger brother. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. Nice. And um, so when did that um, involvement happen of your brother coming into the um, business? It was probably about a year later. Uh, I wasn't a business owner yet, but the uh, my boss at the time was looking for a, a rental BDM yeah. um, and I just recommended my brother. He got the job and and yeah, he's still still there as our head of PM today. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, it looks like you got a really good setup there with, you, with your brother. Yeah, it's good to have someone that I trust running the PM for me. Yeah. Um, PM's definitely not my strength and I don't really understand too much about it. So it's a crazy business property yeah. management, you know, like it's, um, yeah, as a business owner, it's a great asset. It's a great tool mm. and source for listings one day as well. Yep. Um, but it comes with a lot of complications, a lot of headaches. Yeah, absolutely. So you stay fully focused on the sales side and he does the rental side. Yeah. Sales, recruiting, uh, training. Um, Chris focuses on, on rentals. Brilliant. Cool. So, you were a sales agent learning your craft. Mm-hmm. Um, and when was the the moment that you thought, I'm going to take on an office? Um, it was probably about a year in. Um, I was doing quite well uh, in sales. Just I just sort of, I don't know. All I did was listen to the people around me. Um, listen to, you know, at, at um, the people at Harcourt's head office, other real estate agents that I reached out to for advice. I just listened and did whatever they told me to do. Nice. Um, the results came and I had made you know, some decent money in my first year of real estate, um, but I hadn't done anything with that money. It was just mm. sitting there and, and you know, I'm not into flashy cars or fancy things. So I just sort of thought, well, I've got this money. Um, and at the time I was just reinvesting it into marketing myself. Yeah. Um, and somebody suggested to me, well, have you thought about business ownership? Um, and I, I hadn't 
really thought too much about it, but um, the idea kind of stuck and I just kept thinking about it and thinking about it. And then uh, I, it was March, 2021. So it was a year and three months in um, that I just bit the bullet and bought the business from my former uh, business partner. Uh, sorry, did you want to sell principal. it or did you just force that to happen? He, he was hesitant. Um, so what we did, I bought half of the business from him because yep. um, he got some advice from uh, other people you know, that he trusted. Um, and they sort of thought, well, look, the business will grow quicker with me involved. Absolutely. Because um, I think you know, at, at that stage it was starting to, to grow. Yep. Um, so I bought half of the business and we were business partners for a while. Um, and then not too long after I bought the other half off him. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah. Awesome. And um, so were you still on the tools selling then? Is that what you were doing? Well, in March when I bought in, I was still selling. Um, and then I got some advice from Mike Green, who owns Harcourts. Um, he sort of did a one-on-one with me when I bought in. And he, and he said something to me that I've always remembered. And he said, you're no longer in the business of listing and selling real estate. You're in the business of keeping real estate agents happy. And he said, your business grows, the more real estate agents you have and the better your real estate agents do. And to me, maybe I took it the wrong way, but I, I sort of thought, oh, so I've got to stop selling. And he was like, well, that's not what I, not really what I mean. Like, you know, you still need the income. And I was like, no, 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 I get it. I'm going to stop selling. Yeah. And um, I guess that was probably the first, or in that say, case, second big risk, but I just quit cold turkey. So I think it was June 2021. So three months after I bought the business, um, I said, I'll sell the rest of my stock, but I'm not taking any more listings and I'm just going to focus on helping my team grow and recruiting. I love that. I love that. Um, I'm very, very much in a similar space. Um, you know, like I still am on the tools. I still sell a lot of property mm. myself personally. Um, but obviously I'm, I'm growing this team here. We've got 18 yeah. solid agents right now inside central, yep. but they've all got their buyer managers. So this is going to be 30 agents very soon. Yeah. Um, and then I've got my freedom brand as well that yep. I'm growing. So <clears throat> yeah, I'm at that, that very similar moment in my life and in my career, mm. I, I feel like um, this brand needs me to be the listing agent right now, yeah. um, so I'm not quite ready to give that up. But I am hoping to bring more people into this brand or build my current agents up to to take on that limelight. Yeah. So I don't need to do it anymore. And, and we're I, so close. I you think know? there's pros and cons of being with a big brand or and or being an in, independent or or whatever. And I think one of the advantages I had was that I was already in Harcourts, which is already an established brand. So Absolutely. it didn't require me to be selling to yep. build that brand. Whereas yes. in your case, I think yeah. it's probably still a little bit more that you got to yeah. build the brand, but it's, I see it everywhere now. Like I drove yeah. down here, I couldn't, I saw your face and your team everywhere. So awesome. I think you're pretty much there. <laughs> yeah. Redland city. Yeah. We're, we're, we're very much known here, but it's the rest of Australia that it's our, yeah, our focus enough. now, because when we do start a new agent and we do have um, agents um, in, I've got a couple in Northern territory. Mm. Um, I've got a couple in Perth wow. and I've got a couple in Melbourne. Yep. Um, and then the rest are like scattered around in Brisbane. So, and sunshine coast. So it's very, very hard sometimes for them to get the traction. Mm. Um, but a couple of the ones that have just implemented everything that I've said, yep. they're really excited exploding now and um, yeah. they're going to start building their teams and this thing is going to happen yeah it's just you know it's just that starting of a of an independent brand i guess that yep. you have to go through but um yeah i'm really i'm really impressed with um with you as a person and your um your growth to be honest of this company like i mm. I, I i looked you up like maybe a year or so ago and um and of what's happened in the, that amount of time, it's it's pretty remarkable because uh, we've got a similar sort of thing here in the Redland City, where you know, like exactly like you said, you create the space and they will come, mm -hmm. and and that's what we did here with this office because I was um, in a smaller office, and then I was like, oh, we'll take on this, and I yeah. didn't have the agents at the time, but we opened this, and then they will just start calling. Yeah. So that's what you found. Um, yeah, and I found I wouldn't say they called me. Um, it was more so because I had this space, I showed that, you know, we're serious, we're here. Oh, yeah. um, and so when I called agents to say, hey, I'm building a big team, you know, I want the, the, the best, I want the future of this industry working for me. Nice. Um, and then I took them for a tour, brought them into the office, showed them around. It was, um, I think a lot of people buy in, they see it, they go, wow, this guy 
clearly is is got the balls to take a risk. Yeah. Um, and he's willing to support me. Well, then yeah, I'll I'll, I'll support him. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Because when I first came to your office, I was like, all right, wow, this is a, an amazing space, and you've got so much more room there to fill it too. Like you yeah. could have probably double the agents you've got really I if think, you really yeah, wanted to. Yeah. Like comfortably, we could have about 120 people in the office. Um, and and that is the goal. Like I want to get to 100 um, by the end of 2023. Which, which yeah. So, yeah. you know, you said you're in the business now, keeping agents happy. How the hell are you going to keep 120 <laughs> agents happy, bro? Because <laughs> that is, um, you know, as a, as a business owner, mm. as an office leader, you know, that's something that you, because you put so much time and effort into these people, don't yeah. you? And your whole heart and soul. Plus you, you're taking like financial risks, like big financial risks on these people. And, yeah. you know, so talk to me about that. Um, so a lot of the people that I bring on, I... I see it as um, I provide an opportunity and I look at these people when I hire them and I think, okay, well, let's be real. I'll know within six months if this person's going to make it or not. Um, that six months is going to cost me roughly $30,000, $35,000. Am I willing to take the risk on that person? Do I think that I'll get a return on my investment if I put my time and my money and, and back this person? Um, and I kind of, you know, a lot of the time it, it's going off off my gut, um, but if the answer is yes, and I think, mm. hey, you know what, I will I will be able to turn this person into a superstar, then I'll take the risk. And I've been wrong, um, and it costs time, it costs money, um, but giving somebody an opportunity, I think, is is what this is all about. Definitely, um, somebody gave me an opportunity, and yep. I ran with it. And I think, who knows, the, the next me could be. You know, sitting there waiting to to join. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, definitely. You know, but you know, when you um you do meet some of these agents, they are going to become successful mm. to follow in your path and that office and that culture that you've got there. They will come successful. It's just because your agents are so new and fresh at the moment. It's mm. like happy days. Um, yep. But that is going to be harder to manage. The the more successful yeah. and the bigger the egos get in there. So that's something that you're going to need to yep. really, you know focus on, I think, and creating like culture is, you know, for me, I think culture is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Do you, what's your, I, I agree. And I, I say to my team regularly, um, cause as you and I know, as business owners, the culture ultimately rests on the business owner or the leader. Yeah. Um, the leader determines the culture and, and my energy is more impactful than I realize sometimes. Like yeah. if I go to work in a bad mood, it actually affects the whole team. Yeah. Um, so I need to bring the energy every day. Nice. I need to be in a good mood. I need to make sure that I'm there. I'm high-fiving everyone. I'm, hey, what's going on, you know? Yeah. Um, if I don't, then the team feels it. But I, I make it clear to my team, and I say this regularly, um, we're all responsible for the culture. Yes. We all benefit from a good culture, so let's all work together to keep that culture alive. Absolutely. Um, and you got to be quick to identify people that are bad for culture. Somebody could be a really good agent and making a ton of money, but if they're bad for culture, ultimately that will negatively impact the entire team and that person's not worth keeping. So yep. um, you're going to move to What if one. they're like your top performer? Even so. Even so. If my top performer doesn't do as much as the rest of the team combined and if my top performer were to negatively impact the rest of the team, then that would um, that would hurt me more than losing my top performer. Nice, bro. Nice. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel mm. as well. Yep. It's... Um, yeah, it's a people business that we're in. You mm. know, in real estate, um, when you're an agent, it's a people business to get listings. And when yep. you're an office owner, it's a people business um, inside your office. It's culture. Yeah. Everyone I treat um, with utmost respect from um, whatever level they are at, if they're my top agent to if they're yep. my admin to anyone. You and, know, so. and I say this to my team. So um, I, I see this as not a real estate business. I see it as a facility for real estate agents. That's yep. how I run my business. Yep. And I don't pay my agents a split. I take a split of their commission. So I've got to earn my keep. I've got to earn my cut of their commission by providing value. Um, and so I tell of all of my team, the way I'll grow my business is by my agents selling more um, or by bringing on more agents and then ultimately by keeping them as long as possible. Um, I know that they'll stay if they receive value for the money that they pay me. Um, and I think that's just a, a mindset that, that I have that I don't think a lot of business owners 
No, have. they don't. Yeah, no, mm. it's um, it's hard to find good business owners, good leaders. Mm. Um, I went to the Tesla conference. Uh, oh, did you? A couple of days ago. Yeah, yeah it was awesome. Yeah. And um, you know, Brian White, you know, the one of the ultimate leaders in real estate. Mm. Um, in his wise words, he said, "It's not just a team; it's a family." Yeah. You know, and if you <clears throat> you have your family at home, but this is another family, isn't mm. it? That you're creating inside that office, and yeah, you know, you got your your wild child sometimes, and sometimes yep. you know you have to have hard conversations with them, yep. and you know, but if everyone is on the same path, it's it's on. Yeah. Um, I want to touch on um, your family side of things. So, is your brother the only person that works in the family that inside the office as well? He, yeah, he's my only family member currently working in the business. Yeah. Um, I, my brother and I have always been close, you know, yeah. obviously we grew up together. We're pretty close in age. Um, he's only a year younger than me. Um, so for him, I trust him and I, I, you know, he, he does his job and he, and you know, of course we fight cause we're brothers, but, yeah. um, we, it, it just works. Yeah. I don't think I would employ anyone else from my family or, or even close friends. I just, I don't like the idea of yeah. mixing family and business. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's fair enough. Because I've got obviously my brother. We're extremely close, yeah. as you know. Um, <laughs> and then I've got um, my dad and my mom and my my partner Tanya. She oh, works inside that. the business as wow. well. Yeah, because um, Marty Fox at the. Um, uh, conference the other day he spoke as well and he's got 11 family members really um, in his business it's a nightmare <laughs> yeah oh yeah it, it, Imagine it could go arguments. both ways you know yeah. so i was interested to find out if there was more family members in your team because mm. yeah i feel like sometimes when you are starting a business that's who you can lean into the most when you're first trying to get up and running yeah if you've got a good family background maybe your, your wife comes with you or your um you know yeah your family true. Or, i think um it's an interesting dynamic mm. with Chris and I because um, if an employee um, or one of my agents or whatever did something wrong, it's just you, you sit them down, you have the conversation, you fix the problem. When it's Chris, it's kind of different, you know, like I can't just be like, hey, you did this wrong. He, he'll just go piss off, you know, yeah. and we'll, we'll have an argument. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. Which, you know, is, is different. But I guess on on the flip side, I trust him completely, yeah. you know, and – and um. Ultimately, if he tells me he's doing something that will benefit the business, I I just trust that. Yeah. So absolutely, mate. Absolutely. No, that's awesome. So um, <clears throat> let's say um, you just said that before one of the agents does something wrong. Mm -hmm. um, say you got a couple of agents in your office. They they're going for the same listing, for instance. Mm. How do you solve this problem? Communication. Um, I think occasionally that does happen, and surprisingly, not as often as I thought it would happen as the team was growing. Um, and in the two years that I've been a business owner now, I think it's, it's maybe happened a handful of times. Yep. And every time it's fixed with communication. Yep. It literally is just sitting down. I say to the team, look, have you been putting notes in the CRM? Yep. Um, that's a big thing that we always try to get them to do. If you haven't put notes to say that you spoke to them at this time, you don't have a text message or an email, you said you spoke to them on the phone. Well, sorry, I've got to go with the person that has the proof. Yep. Um, but usually what I find is my agents will just talk to each other and sometimes – one will go, oh, you know what? I just met them in an open home. It wasn't that big a deal. You take it. Or yep. they'll say, yeah, we've both been talking. Why don't we share the listing and go halves on it? Yeah, perfect. Um, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we do in here as well. Because you, you do. like, And obviously, the bigger the businesses get the and the better the agents mm. get, you know, the more people that's going to – they're going to touch on and yeah yeah there's obviously if you're managing the buyers so well you know they're going to be bumping into you know similar buyers yeah. and that turns into some issues here and there but yeah. yeah that's exactly what i'm like as well as a business owner i'm like all right well let's assess this let's uh, have a look at your history on these people mm. that's why if you've got a good database and you can keep that history on the conversations that you've yeah. had you could be like oh it sounds like this person's definitely got it bro so back off yeah. you know yeah yeah absolutely so um Touching on um, on your teams and the and the setup, so mm -hmm. um, you have in your side your office, you have like a pathway. How does it or how does it work? So we have um, we have sales associates. Um, I think you call them buyer managers. We just call them sales associates. Yep. So, so um, I've got at all times I'll have five, um, or I try to have five associates that aren't paired with an agent. They're just yep. ready to go. Uh, they're in the office. They make. Um, cold calls and build databases all day long Nice. Um, with the hope that an agent will pick them. Um, so if an agent has an associate that, um, you know, transitions to become an agent or they leave the business or they just need another one or whatever, then an agent in my team will be able to pick one of those five associates to join their team. Okay. Um, 
we have a six month program and we say, um, which I know is different to a lot of businesses and I think yours as well. Um, in our business, you're an associate for six months and then you're an agent. If you're not ready to be an agent after six months, you probably will never be ready. Um, that's how I look at it. And I think, um, it doesn't take that long to learn real estate. Um, I think if you're willing to do the work, you're willing to be consistent and you can, uh, show that you want it, yep. then you'll succeed. Yeah. So we have a six month, um, system where they learn everything they need to learn in that six months. They help their agent build their business, um, help them with open homes, selling properties, all of, all of that. Um, and then they'll become a real estate agent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's awesome. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. We do a similar sort of thing here. You know, like I hate throwing the new recruits straight out into the deep end because yep. it's very, very hard to get listings, especially in a tougher market. I think that yeah. last 12 months, you know, like, yeah, it was a lot easier because there was a lot mm. more listings out there, but now it's going to tighten right up yep. and people are going to want to go to the best agents. So yeah. yeah, having some structure around that. So I just want to dive into that then. So mm -hmm. you've got these associates, there, five, six of them that you've got there, they're all battling it out to become someone's assistant or mm -hmm. someone or be an agent themselves sooner or later. Um, so, so you pay for that. You pay for their wages. So what I found is when pairing an associate with an agent, um, in my office, the agent pays half of the associate's wage. Yep. Um, I find that a lot of my agents don't have the same appetite for risk that I do. Yeah. So when they bring on an associate, if that associate doesn't work out, they feel like they've wasted their time and money. Yeah. Um, I. So what I've decided to do is I'll hire five people at once. They work for me for a couple of weeks or a month or you know a month or two. You find out pretty quickly whether they're going to work out or not. Yeah. Um, and if they don't, then we move them on and we replace them. But that way it's not interrupting my agent's businesses. Because yep. then what will happen is um, they'll be uh, in that, so we, we call it the office associate pod. Yep. Um, they'll be in that group for um, for you know, a month or two until we think they're ready to be paired up with an agent. Um, and then if an agent decides, you know what, I think this person uh, would be good for my team, yep. obviously we'll make sure they are a good fit and that, you know, they, um, they'll they gel well together. Yep. Um, and if that's the case, then they'll join up and their six months starts from there. Okay. Um, the alternative is um, we've had sometimes where somebody as an office associate does the six months as an office associate without getting paired to an agent. We go, well, you know what? You've done the work. In fact, you've probably done more work than, than when you're um, paired with an agent. So we'll give you a shot. And yeah. we'll make them an agent. And these people are just prospecting pretty much full time? All, that's all they do, yeah. Yeah, Prospect. nice. And what happens when they find a, an appraisal? Uh, then if they, if one of those people that's not paired to an agent finds an appraisal, we'll, um, uh, we'll give that to uh, an agent on the team. And it's kind of just like a round robin. So we go in alphabetical order. We don't go by location because that'll just cause more drama. So alphabetical order, sometimes you get a really good lead, sometimes you get a terrible lead. It is what it is. You get what you're given. Yep. Um, we don't give handouts. We give opportunities. Yep. Um, getting these leads is kind of like a bonus. Um, between the five of them, they'll book usually between 40 to 50 appraisals every week. Um, a lot of them are just price updates, nothing Absolutely. crazy. And yeah. yeah, we just hand them out. But occasionally we get real good ones from it. So Yeah, of course. Yeah. Definitely. It's just a numbers game, really. It is. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So this associate now joins um, someone's team mm -hmm. and um, do the agents get them to be acting like second agents or do they get them to do buy management work or what do they get them to do? Yep. So from day one, um, they'll, they'll be prospecting, um, trying to get new business for my agents. We work on a, um, like a pretty tight um, schedule for them where we say, um, before 12, no appointments. You're prospecting, you're in the office, you're just doing um, the dollar productive activities. Yep. After 12 is when you send them to appointments. So we try to get the agents to stick to that as well and yep. say, don't go sending them to do a building and pest or a photo shoot or whatever Absolutely. before 12. Yep. Before 12, they're in the office prospecting, actually helping you grow your business. Yeah. Um, after 12 is when they can go out and do open homes, inspections, whatever. Cool. Um, also in that time, they're helping the agents sell the property. So they're doing inspections, they're doing buyer inquiries, callbacks, et cetera. Um, they do open homes on the weekends as well with the agent, um, yep. but the majority of their time would probably be spent prospecting nice. um, because we try to say to them, well, when you become an agent, that's what you should prioritize is your prospecting. Cool, cool. Mm. All right, so now let's look at that next level then. So mm -hmm. uh, the agent is working with this associate yep. and now this associate now wants to be their own agent. Yep. Um, does the current agent get any sort of kickback for that or 
No, so um, the current agent, what we'll what we do going into it is we say to them, look, this is a six month um, program. Yeah. In six months' time, this person is going to be an agent, um, and it's not. It's six months today, so I'm out. You know, there's yep. a bit of a transition period to bring in the new associate, um, which usually takes a week or two. Um, but in that time, the so uh, the agent is getting somebody who's going to be completely committed um, and is going to probably work harder than somebody who's got to have to be an associate for 18 to 24 months. Yeah. Um, in that six months, those associates, like my team come in, uh, my associates get in at 7 a.m. every day. Um, they probably don't leave till about 6 p.m. every night. Um, they're busting their ass. They're doing six days a week and doing all of that for minimum wage. Yeah. Not for the money. They're doing it for the opportunity. Absolutely. Um, Love that. And then what we do for the agents is it's my job to recruit the next one, to train them up, to get them ready and slot them into their team so yeah, that nice. there's no interruption for the agent's business. Awesome. And I can see how this is a massive positive for you as well because your office is now growing rapidly because of this mm -hmm. and you've got more agents and more bums and seats and yeah. you know more agents to take on more associates. and Yeah. yeah. No, what I've found is the agents that I've grown from scratch have actually outperformed the people I've taken from other agencies. Yeah. So let's lean into that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, nice. No, that's awesome, mate. That's so good. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a really good growth method that you've got mm -hmm. there. Um, I think the thing that you might run into some complications with is that when you start to um, get some of these agents who are writing these ridiculously big numbers mm -hmm. and they're paying you a lot of money, that mm -hmm. is the part that you're going to have to manage. So that's the, the thing that maybe I could help you with and yeah. we could talk well, about that. That's why we're here. Yeah, so we'll do that off camera. Learn and, from um, each other. Yeah, we can talk about um, all those types of things because, yeah, this is, um, you know, real estate for me right now is um, is about meeting good operators like yourself mm -hmm. and like seeing how we can all help each other out and, and how we can help, um, you know, improve each other's businesses. Yeah. Um, but again, like the fact that you've taken this on, you know, um, in, in this office, I just wrote some notes here. So you, you've got this office and it's got this big training room. You've got mm -hmm. um, a big, um, you know, like, a, like a, I don't know what you want to call that, like a, a rumpusy type room where you've got your pool table. Oh, and your, yeah. Your, you know, <laughs> your ping pong, you yeah. know, like, which is cool for, you know, culture as well every now and again. Um, but you also do your auctions inside yeah. um, the office as well. That's right. You know, which I love because that, again, brings more eyes to this amazing office that you've got, yeah. which again is going to spread around the marketplace. Yeah. So yeah, like that, um, that office there, you know, like it's, <clears throat> it's a big, it's a big move to making a statement like that in your area. You know, I really want to dive yeah. into the guts of like <laughs> how you've made that decision, you know, because that is such a huge risk. You know, yeah. you say you're, you're more um, inclined to take on risk, but that's, that's a, that's a big move. Yeah. But you must when, have confidence in your people, you know? Yeah. It's confidence in my people, confidence that um, if I just do the work, the results will come. Yeah. And when I – so it was the end of 2021. I'd been a business owner for nine months maybe. Um, the business was growing because when I bought the business, there was 10 people. Um, that was March 2021. By December 2021, I had – 21 people, I think. So we'd, we'd doubled in size. Um, and, and also in, in figures, we would almost double what we were when we purchased it. Um, however, I kind of, we had outgrown the office that we were in. Um, I say we uh, a lot, but I, I mean my team. So the team was now, like I had people sharing desks because it was just too small. Yeah. Um, so I had to find something bigger. I started looking around. Um, I wanted to stay in Stafford, which is my area. Um, there was sort of nothing that was the next step. So I was in an office that was 150 square meters. I wanted something maybe 350, 400. I couldn't find anything. Um, and then I saw somebody sent me as a joke. Um, Rebel Sport had just moved out and, and their position was available. And that was uh, 980 square meters. <laughs> and I saw that and I was like, oh, haha, yeah, that's funny. And then I thought, oh, it's literally just down the street. I might as well go and have a look. So I went and had a look and then everyone was telling me, don't do it because um, it's too much and you can't afford it. And literally we couldn't afford it. Mm. Um, but I thought I can make this work. So I negotiated with the landlord a six month rent free period. Nice. And I thought, cool, I've got six months to be able to afford this or yeah. I'm going broke. Yeah. Um, so I signed a 10 year lease. I took it on um, the fit out 
uh, Chris and I did it ourselves. We've we kind of had like we've renovated houses in the past, and yeah. we thought, you know what, screw paying a builder. It's going to take too long. It's going to cost too much. Um, so he and I got in and physically did the the fit out ourselves yeah. um, with the help of some trades. Yeah. Um, so that took about two months, and that was November and December, and we just worked over Christmas, and then we opened in January 2022. Um, and in that six month period, I just I, I had to do it. So yeah. I just had to work. I had to help my team grow, um, and I had to keep recruiting. And by July, when I had to start paying rent, I was in a position where I could afford it. So. Yeah, so good, so good. Yeah, like it's a remarkable story, you know. And like I, this is where my business is at right now. Like especially growing freedom, I want to meet these types of people like yourself who mm. are ready to take this next risk, you know, because yeah. I want to be what um, hardcore's worth for you, you know, behind the scenes and being mm. like, listen, this is how we can do this, so we can set this all up, yeah. and, and I want to show them this these plans. So. And there are several people that are in this similar spot to what you are right now and they're yep. looking for a brand to do this with. Yeah. And I want to meet these people and I want to be, you know, what Harcourt's worth to you, to them, you know, mm. here at Freedom. And and I and I honestly believe, like exactly like you've done, if you create a good enough culture and a good enough space and then you offer what you can offer, people mm-hmm. will come, yep. you know. Um, and then, you know, then it just blows from there, you know. Yeah. But you're going to have a whole new set of challenges, I feel, soon. Yeah. You know, like... I think I like about Harcourts, you know, it's um, very similar to like Freedom, um, how we're, um, everyone's looks the same. You yeah. Know, like their their marketing is the same. Yeah. You know, like their, um, you know, if you go on to their signboards, all the signboards are the same. You know, like if you go on their social medias, all their social medias are the same. There's there's standards, mm. you know, whereas like some of the brands these days, they're, they're all losing the plot. You know, they may as well not even be yeah. brands, you know, like. You know, there's a couple in this area here, like big offices in this Redland City mm. who are, um, they're a certain brand, but then they've got all of their agents inside their brands, creating their own brands inside the brands. It's yeah, like, what have, are you doing? Like, We it, have like, similar things in our area too. Yeah, it doesn't make mm. any sense to me. I feel like those leaders aren't really looking to the future. Yep. I feel like they're not really protecting their own brand. And I just think they're just trying to keep people happy yeah. in a way that's going to ultimately destroy their brand. Yeah. You know, like, so how do you, you know, because when you meet these new agents, everyone's got their own thing. They all got their own <laughs> style. I want to do it this way. I want to, and you're like, how do you get the, everybody to understand the bigger picture of what you're creating? It comes back to culture, and I find I'm I the best thing to do is to be completely transparent, explain what my goals are and what I want to see for my business. And sometimes I'll talk to agents that are, yeah, you know, they could be writing close to a million dollars in fees, and they're from another agency, and I'll say. Um, come on board, you know, we do a deal and everything. And everyone on my team wears, wears the Harcourt's tie, yes. right? And that could be literally a deal breaker for for this person. And yeah. they say, oh, I just don't think I could wear the tie. And I yeah. think if you're not willing to join purely because you don't want to wear a tie, mm. there's probably more to it, Yeah, right? You're probably not actually ready to make a move. Yeah. Um, I don't think uh, the branding or or whatever is actually what, people are joining for. Yeah. Um, for me, it's valuable and it's important. Um, and I say that to people that I'm talking to and say, look, this is important to me. I'm going to help you with what's important to you. But in return, I expect that you will stay on brand. Your marketing needs to be blue. Don't put yellow flies out, obviously. Yeah. Just it's pretty standard stuff. But I expect that you'll wear the tie, you'll fit in, you'll you'll look the part and yeah. you'll you'll assimilate into our culture. Yes. And if you're not willing to do that, you're not welcome. Yeah. Um, and I find if somebody isn't willing to do that, they probably weren't going to be a good fit anyway. Yeah. But I also find that people don't join or not join because of small things like that. Yeah. If they're not joining and they're saying it's that, it's an excuse. There's some other reason they don't mm. want to leave the way they are or they don't want to join me, and that's okay too. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah, definitely. But you are. You're, you're protecting your brand, and I feel like um, – you're protecting um, everybody's future because, like, mm. if you've got all these agents working these different patches and and your Harcourt's connections there is just getting known, you know, for doing positive things and you know what your agents are saying mm. out in the marketplace and everyone's on a similar sort of pathway, mm-hmm. you know, that's going to spread around town. It's like this yeah. positive interaction that they're having. You know, as long as it is positive, you know, as long as that's all happening, like yeah. it's going to affect everybody's business positively. Yep. And I, I – I say that to people that I'm recruiting. I'll tell them this is my reasoning for wanting it, um, and you could argue that's that's only really benefiting me and my business. 
I would say that's not quite true. That yeah, benefits agreed. everyone because yeah. um, if the general public are seeing my brand everywhere, yeah. um, then they're going to call my office when it's time to sell yeah. or at least us and, and our competitors as well, but at least we're getting in. Yeah. Um, that is going to benefit you as an agent. Agreed. Yeah. hundred percent agreed. Yeah. I'm, I'm very big on the system side of things and I like mm. my team to run their systems a certain way. Yep. Um, so I can see like a dashboard where I can see the, uh, where all of our calls are at. So yep. I can see that, um, certain people haven't been rung back after an open home yeah. and, um, or that we've got a certain amount of leads in the system that haven't been qualified. Um, a certain amount of buyers that when we said we were going to call them haven't been called yet. Mm. So I'm like all over my agents and I'm like yeah. sending them shots of the dashboard and I'm like, you're our issue right now. Get your calls down because yeah. what I'm trying to do in the marketplace is show everybody in the Redland City that um, if you contact one of my freedom agents, there is going mm. to be a process how you're going to be handled. Yeah. And because now the marketplace understands how we handle things, they respect us and yep. we do better because of that. And, I love that. Yeah. And I've seen some of your processes. Um, you you added me as a buyer to one of the properties that you were <laughs> listing um, so that I could see those things. And now I'm still getting updates about awesome. everything you're listing, everything you're selling. I've had uh, some of your people on your team have called me. Um, so it, it actually it is really impressive, awesome. the system that you've built. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's um, it, this system we've been working on this for twelve years. It's um, mm. yeah, it's a foolproof plan for real estate agents. You know, like it's a, and allows me as a business owner to oversee everything. Yeah, <clears throat> but yeah, that's what I really like about your brand. It's like I feel like they're all doing something similar. Because when I came and spoke to your office that day, mm. I had so many of them like follow me on um, Instagram. Yep. And so I go on because I go onto their Instagram and I'm like. They're, they're all on brand. They're all on point. You yeah. know what I mean? They all look the same. And I'm like, this is so refreshing. So yeah. nice to see, you know? And and also for me, and I don't know if you're if you'll find the same thing, some of my agents are really good at social media. Yeah. And some of them are terrible. Or yeah. or they could be good, they just can't be bothered. Yeah. And and I can understand that because I look, to be honest, there's more dollar productive things you could be doing. Yeah. So what I do in my office is I'll create content for them every yeah. day probably two or three posts get emailed to every agent on the nice. team yep. and it, they, it's optional. They can post it or not, but yep. all they have to do is open on their phone, screenshot and post it on, on yep. Instagram. Um, Cause I find if I do it for them, it'll get done. Yep. If I don't, they'll do it for a week and then it won't be consistent or whatever. So at least this way, um, I, I find that for a lot of different things that yep. consistency is the most important thing. It doesn't matter how good the content is. It's more about yep. consistency. Absolutely. So if I do it for them, it'll be consistent. Yeah, well, mm. that's the, what the whole uh, message of the Tesla conference was about. It was really? consistency. Yeah. Every single person got up. That was a main point that they yep. hit. It was all about consistency. You mm. know, like they're posting this much too many times a day. They make this many calls. They're in this many letterboxes. Yep. They've got this. This is how it was all consistent. Everything was consistent. And it's just like you just don't stop. Like it's not like, oh, I'm going to take a week off or a day off here and there. It's like, mm. no, no, no. We do the same things every single day. Yep. We're the same in this office. So we have a social media manager. Mm-hmm. Um, they sit at a HQ level, but they manage this office for us. Mm-hmm. And um, what we do is every single time we anybody in this office lists or sell a property, mm. we put it into a group, but it doesn't have the agent's name on it. It just says the property address. It says the price that it's sold for. Yep. It's got the freedom um, stuff all over it. And then we send it into the group. So now all these people are just pumping like solds into their story. It's like, um, yeah. does, and we just use that all as like, um, it doesn't matter who sold it, just pop it into your story and make it look like every you've sold 50 properties. Wow. You know, so, and the, uh, some of our agents who are just trying to get up and running and get started, mm. that's like goal for them because, you know, everyone's on the same path here. We're all sharing each yep. other's wins and losses and, you know, like it's, yeah, just bigger picture stuff, eh? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, nice. Um, I have, we get a lot of guest speakers in to come and talk to the team. Um, you know, top agents, business owners, you, you obviously came. Everyone, including you, pretty well says, says the same thing mm. in their own way, um, that ultimately it's consistency yep. that will make you successful in real estate. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah, I try and got a lot of like young guys in here. I'm like, it's like the same as going <laughs> to the gym, bro. You know, like you can't just not yep. go to the gym for two weeks and think yep. you're going to be sweet. You know, like we had, you just got to keep going. I had someone come in. Um, Mitch Perryboom, he came in and did a talk for the team and he said, he, he got up and he was really funny the way he did it. He goes, you know, I went, I went to the gym this morning. First time I haven't been in, in years. I went to the gym and I'm really upset cause I'm still fat. And, and we were like, what? And he's like, 
how ridiculous is that? Yeah. And everyone's like, yeah, that's really ridiculous. And he's like, well, imagine if you did prospecting for a week and then went, why am I not a million dollar agent? Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Spot on, spot on. Yeah, bro, you've, um, you, like our businesses, I was looking at um, your connections one before mm. and um, we have got like, it's like, it's so similar. So your oh, connections, really? <laughs> you've got 64 properties for sale right now. Oh, you've yeah. sold 215 in the last um, 12 months, yep. you know, um, similar on the rental side here. And um, we've sold, 50, uh, we've got 57 for sale, 266. So, mm. you know, like we're very, very similar. Like yeah. everything about our offices is so similar right yep. now. So it's going to be awesome to watch us both grow yeah. um, our individual business units over the next, you know, couple of years. Um, I think yours has got the potential to be the biggest office in Australia. You know, the, the size so. that you've got there, the amount of agents that you've got, and if you can control that culture, well, not control, but like, you know, make that, co that culture just be what it is, continue that and, ha and yeah. have your, you know, it's like in a footy team and I've got them in this office. So like I've got, I've got my whole team, but I've also got a few of my leaders behind the scenes yeah and they're my leaders inside this team you know it's like um if i'm not there i want you to just convey my message yep. to my people you know yep. so if you can keep that rolling like whew, huge things yeah. are coming for you guys that's the goal we want to be number one absolutely yeah. yeah you've got all the ability to make it happen mate and i think too it's it's really cool that the real estate industry um from the outside everyone thinks we're so competitive and yeah. yet there are so many people in the industry that are willing to share like like yeah. this. Yeah. Um, collaboration, I think, is a really big thing. There are a lot Definitely. of other business owners that I talk to that I get advice from. Um, and I've had a lot of uh, agents, other business owners, people that want to do what I've done, reach out, Yeah. Um, which has been really cool because that's starting to happen more now. Is Seriously. That, um, yeah, people that want to <laughs> be leaders, um, young people that want to become uh, business owners have started reaching out to me and, and you know, obviously – to spend the time and, and yeah. help them because people helped me. That's it. And you just don't know where this thing might take you as well, mm. you know. One day, you know, you might need all these people and, you know, like your relationships again, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I really appreciate everything you've done today, mate, and coming in and um, speaking to us all. Uh, I've got a lot of agents um, in my office that will watch this, I know. Mm. And um, the associates at Robbie's office get in at 7 a.m. Yeah, all seven right, 7 a.m. So there's your challenge. Um, <laughs> yeah. Don't want to see any more of this uh, 7.30, 8 o'clock stuff <laughs> um, and stay it till at least 6. So, yeah, let's uh, <laughs> let's ramp it up some some of you lot. So, um, yeah, mate, appreciate everything. You're a legend. Thank no you. Thank awesome. you. No worries.